Whether I'm traveling or doing street photography, I always aim to keep my camera gear as lightweight and minimal as possible. This can be really difficult to pull off, especially if you're looking to capture both video and photography at the same time. Which is why in this episode, I'm gonna talk about the gear I used on my most recent trip to Abu Dhabi, which was the Fujifilm X-T4 alongside the 1655 f2.8. One of the things I really wanted to avoid was carrying two cameras at once. So one for photography and then one for video. The whole idea of just walking around with two cameras, one around my shoulder, one around my neck. I just hate the whole concept of that. So with this setup, I'm able to capture pretty much any photo I want, especially with that 16 to 55 focal range. And when it comes to video, I'm able to capture really high quality footage, which is stabilized as well. Now the reason the camera and the lens isn't in my hand at the moment is because I'm actually filming this episode now with the X-T4 and 16 to 55. But uh, when I was over in Abu Dhabi, that was the setup I used pretty much all the time. So before discussing the setup in a bit more detail, those of you subscribed to the channel would probably have watched the In The Desert episode I released last week. All the footage from this episode was filmed with this setup as were the photos taken on this trip. If you haven't watched that episode, I'll drop the link down below so you can check that out. And also while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. So with this setup, you have a really flexible range, both for photography and video. That 16 to 55 focal range is really standard zoom. On full frame, that'll be your 24 to 70. And with that, you can pretty much capture everything you want, be it landscapes, architecture, do some street photography. You can zoom into 55 millimeters to capture more of that telephoto range. But best of all, when you wanna switch between taking photos and capturing video, all you have to do is turn one switch at the top of your camera. So when it comes to photography, as I just said earlier, the 16 to 55 has pretty much got you covered for all types of photography. If you want to do architecture, street photography, landscapes, a lot. When it comes to video, it's the stabilization in the XC4, which is the most important factor. Now it doesn't matter how good your footage is, how high quality you capture it in, if the footage isn't stable or at least near to stable, it's going to be near unusable. There's only so much software like Final Cut and After Effects can do to stabilize your footage in post. So from my experience using this setup while I was in Abu Dhabi, static scenes work fantastic. So anything handheld where I'm holding a camera, either in a car while I was going somewhere or just stood still with the camera in my hand, those scenes all worked really well. Secondly, when it came to panning, that was also really good. So as you can see in this footage here, I was panning, keeping the subject around the center of the frame and panning from left to right. And that worked really good. And for both panning and uh, shooting handheld scenes, static scenes, I found that stabilizing the footage in post was really easy. And especially on Final Cut where you can use tripod mode and it really just makes it look like you filmed the footage on a tripod. When it comes to walking scenes and filming while you're walking, I found that to be a lot more difficult and to be honest, any of the footage I recorded while I was walking was pretty much unusable in post. Now most of that footage was filmed in the desert, so it's obviously pretty hard to walk, making it even harder to stabilize. When it comes to walking shots, you probably do want a gimbal, but the idea of having to pack a gimbal, bring it with me, and balance the camera each time on it, I just hate the idea of that. So um, I prefer shooting static scenes anyway. It's a bit more like photography where you find your composition, you find your scene and your subject, and you just film it as if you're taking a photo. Okay, so onto the settings I used with the X-T4 while using this setup. All the footage was recorded in 4K 25p. Now, as you probably know, when you're shooting in 25p, you're gonna have to capture all the footage at a 50th of a second. Now this offers its own challenges because I was shooting at daytime in the desert and it's extremely bright. So almost all the footage was filmed at F16 and above. So I tried to shoot all the footage in F-Log because I wanted more room to edit in post. However, when you shoot on F-Log on the X-T4, it bumps your ISO up to 640 and that made it too sensitive to the light and therefore I decided to shoot in Eterna instead and move the ISO all the way back down to 100. Now Eterna is a pretty neutral profile and I find it really easy to edit with so I didn't really have too much problems editing in post despite not shooting in F-Log. 
one of the most important settings when it comes to using the XT4 for both photography and video at the same time is to turn on the movie optimized controls. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself constantly moving the dials around when you switch between video and photography. Because as I said earlier, when you go to video, you're gonna set your shutter speed to a 50th of a second or a 60th or whatever. And then when you get back to photography, obviously it's gonna be a lot faster than that. And you, what you don't wanna be doing is switching between the two and then always having to fiddle with the dials and worrying about have you set your shutter speed right when you go back into video and stuff like that. So to avoid it getting confusing, turn on movie optimized controls and what this does is it deactivates the dials on top when you go into movie mode and allows you to use the two smaller dials at the front and back of the camera to change your ISO aperture and shutter speed. Then when you switch back to photography mode, the camera goes back to using the dials at the top. So it just makes it a lot easier to switch between video and photography without having to constantly worry about the settings. So yeah, with this camera set up, the X-T4, the 16-55 f2.8, one camera body, one lens, no bags, no second camera, I was able to capture all the photos I wanted and also all the video I wanted. Best of all, it was a seamless switching between the two. I didn't have to worry about messing around with the settings each time I went from video to photography or vice versa. And uh, yeah, it just allowed me to concentrate on the scene, concentrate on exactly what I wanted to capture instead of kind of worrying about the gear and worrying about making sure I got the settings right instead. Now, obviously no setup is completely perfect. And I did come across a drawback when shooting with the setup. On the X-T4, after I shot a lot of photos, especially when I started doing burst mode, if I was to then switch into video mode, it would take quite a long time to do so, like sometimes 10, 20 seconds, where you could just see the green light flashing, meaning that it was writing the file to the disk. Now, I'm not sure if that's the X-T4 being slow or the fact that I'm using SanDisk Extreme SD cards, which aren't the fastest SD cards out there, but I need to run some tests to make sure that it is that and not the buffer or the XT4 being slow. Secondly, would I use this setup in a city if I was going to Tokyo or if I was going to New York or something? Probably not. I find the 16-55 um, to, to be a bit too big for street photography for my taste. So I'd probably use the same camera body just with a small prime lens maybe the 23 f2 or even the 18 2.8, the pancake lens. So that's my lightweight, minimal camera setup when it comes to traveling, the Fujifilm X-T4 and the 16 to 55 f2.8. If you have any questions about this setup, drop them down in the comments down below, or if you have any questions or any recommendations of your own regarding travel photography, again, drop them down below. A huge thanks for watching this episode. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.